Sports. We are We are so. Friday night, young Matt Whistler pitched a masterpiece. Strzok came out with a breaking ball. Eight innings without a walk. The best debut in Atlanta franchise history. What an amazing big league debut for Matt Whistler. Tonight, the youth movement continues. Williams Perez takes aim opposite New York's Noah Syndergaard in game two of a big three-game series. It's the Mets and Braves from the big house. Saturday Night Baseball from Turner Field is coming up next. Beautiful night for baseball once again here at Turner Field and a big Saturday night crowd is gathering for an outstanding pitching matchup. The Braves have pulled to it in two and a half games of the New York Mets in the National League East and tonight it's Williams Perez versus Noah Syndergaard. Hi again friends Chip Joe and Tom welcome back to the ballpark. Matt Whistler broke in with a bang eight innings and a win in his first major league start. We'll see if Williams Perez can keep up Tommy. Yeah, look for him to go out there tonight and try and feed off of the outing last night. Very similar in terms of what we talked about with Whistler last night and his compete level. Same with Williams Perez. Goes out there, he competes, he gets after it, he's in the strike zone, uses all his pitches, any count, any time, doesn't matter. He's going to throw them all and he's going to come at you, which is what has really made him successful. He's done a tremendous job since he's gotten the opportunity to be in the rotation. Six starts, 3-0 and with a 1-5 ERA. So giving the team a chance to win every time he goes out there. And Joe, the Braves are going to see another one of the Mets' young phenoms again tonight. Yeah, we've been waiting to see this guy. He's was acquired from Toronto in the R.A. Dickey deal. Great big horse, 6'6", 240. Was a former first-round pick by the Toronto Blue Jays. He's gotten off to a good start with the Mets originally, but his last few starts have been a little bit rough. This guy throws in the upper 90s, and as you see in his seven starts, two and four, Although in his three road starts, he's yet to pick up a win in a very high ERA. But with that upper 90 stuff, if he's got that Thor hammer working tonight, it might be pretty tough. Well, both these ball clubs very excited about their pitching present, and they're very excited about the future, too. Should be a lot of fun. It's game two. Braves and Mets baseball. Jace Peterson had the big hit for Atlanta late. He's been setting the table, and we'll talk with him about that right after this.
Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Welcome back to Turner Field, where the Braves are looking to make it two in a row over the first place Mets and keep the New Yorkers winless on their current road trip, where they're 0-3 so far. Hello again, everyone. I'm Andre Aldridge. Last night, it was a couple of former roommates who helped conquer New York, the debut of Matt Whistler, and, of course, Jace Peterson. Man, oh, man, Jace Peterson is our T-Mobile game changer, and he was just a continuation of what Jace has been doing to them, hitting nearly 500 against the Mets over his last four games with a homer, six RBI, five run scored over that span. Heck, he's hitting 284 on the season, which doesn't surprise his former roommate at all. No, I mean, last year kind of didn't get the, as much opportunity as he did here. Uh, so coming here was good for him. He got that huge opportunity, uh, and he definitely earned it. Uh, playing with him the last couple of years, you know, hard worker, uh, really good dude. Um, just as a baseball player, I mean, he, he goes after stuff. He never quits. Uh, he's fun to play with. Those words from Whistler actually echoed throughout the Braves clubhouse, and the Braves really talking about his defense last night, helping turn a double play in the sixth to, with Michael Kadire bearing down on him and getting Jacob DeGrand to end the seventh inning. Jace Peterson, indeed, ready to handle his business. It's a heritage night here at Turner Field. We'll be wearing the uniforms of the Atlanta Black Crackers. Williams Perez ready to go to work. Chip Joe and Tom with the call after the break. and your local Ford dealer. If you were driving in downtown Atlanta about 3.30, 4 o'clock this afternoon, you would have thought there's no way a baseball game would be played. It was raining sideways in metro Atlanta, but the skies have cleared. It's turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous night for baseball, and a big crowd is here for the Braves and the New York Mets as Williams Perez wearing the throwback unis. Gets ready to work against the New York Mets, who are wearing the Brooklyn Royal Giants togs as we celebrate Heritage Weekend here at Turner Field. Curtis Granderson leads off the Mets Academy sports lineup. Ruben Tejada at short bat second. Lucas Duda and Michael Kadire are third and fourth. Darno back in harness behind the plate. Lagaris, Herrera, Eric Campbell at third base. And the flame throwing Noah Syndergaard will match up with young Braves right hander Williams Perez. 3 0 on the year with a save. But you see what he's done there in his six starts, 3-0 and with a 1-5 ERA, and just really he's done a nice job of going out there and, and taking advantage of this opportunity and giving the team a chance to win every time he goes out. His Ford keys to pitching success tonight. You saw those walks. He's averaging over a nine-inning course of nine innings, about four walks a game. Cut it to two tonight. This Mets team is down near the bottom of the league in batting average, so don't give them any extra uh, base runners. But the middle of their order, 
when you, especially with Tejada swinging a hot bat right now. Start with him. Tejada, Duda, Kadair, Darno. Those guys can give you some trouble. Uh, they've got some other guys in the lineup today at the bottom of the order that uh, you might be able to pick on if you need to go somewhere for an out. Here's a look at the defense behind Williams Perez for game two of the series. Marquecas, Maven, and Yuri Perez from right to left. Still no Freddie Freeman at first base. We might not see him this entire series with that sore right wrist. Peterson had the big hit last night. Simmons at short. Juan Uribe back in the lineup at third base. And the Iron Man, the old horse, A.J. Brzezinski, is behind the plate. Speaking of behind the plate, Hunter Wendelstedt will call balls and strikes. Ben May at first, David Rackley at second, our old pal Jerry Lane, the crew chief, is at third. You know, this is a special weekend for Hunter Wendelstedt. We all remember his dad, the great Harry Wendelstedt. And in 1998, those two men actually got to umpire together in a few series. First and only time that's happened in Major League Baseball. So we remember Hunter's dad, one of the game's great guys and great umpires here in Atlanta. Williams Perez ready to go. And he'll face Curtis Granderson, who was 0 for 4 last night. If you hear some really awful, ugly sounds, that's because there's some orange clad Mets fans that have filled up a whole lot of seats and left. Yes, they have. They have come out in force. And that's off the plate. Ball one, strike one for Granderson. There they are. They've been hooting and hollering for a while now. They're going to be worn out by the end of the game. Well, they won't have anything to yell about. Hopefully. I don't know what it is about this blue uniform, but Curtis Granderson looks seven feet tall from up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got the pants hiked up above the knees. He's got the orange pinstripe on the side. A lot of royal blue sock. And a strike from Perez evens the count. Two and two. Yeah, when you wear these old unis, you gotta wear the pants up. Yeah, I mean it just Yes. Tahada on deck, it just doesn't even with the three quarter kind of half hearted pants up, just doesn't doesn't look right. And a line drive into center field. Maven's gonna try to cut it off. He will. Granderson stops it first, a long single for him. And that's how the ball game begins for New York. Granderson, like many of his Mets teammates, is not swinging the bat particularly well on the road trip. It's only a second hit. I'm sure that was a strike, and he put a good swing on it. Ruben Tejada is back at shortstop tonight. He played third base for New York yesterday and went two for four and scored the lone Mets run. He like Kadir loves the first pitch. Hitting 417 on the first pitch of his at bat, so don't expect to see a fastball down the middle here. And you did. Shows you what I know. <laughs> they need your report. Anderson a short lead and the pitch is popped up shallow center and that's going to drop between Maven and Peterson and the throw into second is not in time big mistake by Williams Perez right there you got somewhere to be every play you got your middle infielders chasing the fly ball in shallow center field and nobody covering second base. Anderson was in no man's land not knowing if the ball was going to be caught. And the Braves might have gotten a force play had Williams yep. gotten a second. He's just kind of being a spectator in the middle. Of, you got to realize when you see both of your guy middle infielders running out like that, you got to go get to second base. So two hits start the game for New York, and that brings up Lucas Duda. Duda got off to an excellent start offensively for the Mets, but he's cooled off as the calendar has moved to June. He's hitting just 190 this month. Big cut and fouled it back. Strike one. First innings have been an issue for Perez on a couple of occasions. In his first six starts, he's given up more runs in the first than any other inning. Wind 
is blowing out toward the Braves bullpen. And a good changeup had him fooled. It's nothing in two. The Mets, as you know, have not been a very good offensive team of late. Scored just two runs in their last 30 innings. And the Mets have been held to one run or less in a game 16 times already this year. And Duda's down on three pitches. First out. Well, it's a great equalizer, isn't it? That changeup he's got with that big arm action. Heck of a pitch. Yeah, he throws just hard enough that you have to respect his fastball, obviously. But then when you can mix that changeup in, and I love, love when guys go back to back on their off speed pitches. That's a big stretch that Tom would like a guy with a good changeup. Here's Michael Kadire. <laughs> Kadire has knocked in 28 runs. And like I said, be careful here, first pitch. Right, a strike. Pretty amazing that the Mets are where they are, considering how little offensive production they've gotten this year and considering who they're missing in their lineup. No Daniel Murphy, no David Wright. And with Duda cooling off, Terry Collins' club has really had to scratch and claw for any kind of sustained offensive attack. Last night, they had just one run and six hits. Kanier drove in that run. He had a two hit night. And he just got hit by a pitch. First inning not going the way Perez would like. Two hits, a strikeout, now a hit batsman loads them up for Travis Darno, the catcher. That's exactly the way Ploiecki got hit last night, right in the middle of the forearm. That'll leave a mark. Big trouble for Williams Perez here in the first. Base is loaded for Dunno. Ball one, nice stop by Przinski. Dunno missed a lot of time because of injuries. Hit on the hand. It was a shame for the Mets. He was swinging about real well at the time of his injury. He's back now and splitting time with Plawecki behind the plate. 14 RBIs, a 279 average. This is his second bases loaded at bat of the year. Quick bat inside. Two. And that's usually the type pitch that he really goes after on the inner part of the plate or even a little bit in. Anderson, Tejada, and Kadair are the Mets' base runners. Start for Perez up in Boston. He got three double play balls in the first three innings. He'd love one here. And that pitch split the plate. It's two balls, two strikes. Williams went six up at Fenway Park and beat Rick Porcello four to two. That was on Monday. Missed. Good try. Now it's full count. Good spot to go to. Juan Lagares waits on deck. Change on up is. Base. I said an equalizer. Will he have enough gumption to throw it here? Three two. Line base hit left past Uribe. Granderson scores. They're going to wave to Hotter. Yuri Perez's throw toward the plate was not cut off. 
And it's a two run single for Travis Darno and the Mets have struck for two in the opening inning. Fastball in her third. And hit hard. Yeah, I think we had a little bit more feel out there. I think changeup would have been the pitch right there, but certainly didn't want to walk a guy, but fastball caught too much of the plate. So Noah Syndergaard has at least two to play with tonight. Two on, one out for Juan Lagares. He's knocked in five runs in his last ten games. And outside, ball one. Is line foul at first. And Perez now ahead, one ball, two strikes. Here's the first earned runs Perez has given up in 14 and a third innings. Swing and a miss. Lagares is retired. That's a big second out. Two strikeouts for Perez in the opening inning, and Daniel Herrera, or excuse me, Dilson Herrera is the hitter. Last start for, ooh, got away with one there. Yeah. Last start for Perez was against Boston in Boston. Six innings of five hit shutout ball, two walks, two strikeouts. More man to get. It's the Mets second baseman. Herrero was 0 for 3 last night. And takes outside. Those are those aforementioned injuries. The Mets have to play some youngsters. Flores is 24. Herrera is 21. Flores has the night off tonight. Ruben Tejada gets the start at short. Even count one ball, one strike. That's bounced out of play. It's a ball and two strikes. Going to have to find something here going into the second inning on location with his fastball. Or he's going to have to start using that off speed stuff more to get him off it because he is, he's been missing in the middle and off the corners. And did there. Dyer at second, Darno at first. And the 2 2 pitch. Here's a bouncer foul. Talked a lot about Williams Perez being 3 0. Oh, let's not forget the save. Did pick up a save against the Mets up in New York on May 13th. Pitch count in the opening inning. This will be number 29 on a muggy night. And Herrera laid off. Eric 
Campbell's the eighth place hitter for the Mets. He waits next. Ground ball to the infield. They've got to, they can't make the play, at least try and knock it down. Strike three outside corner. Herrera didn't think so. Perez struck out the side, but he also gave up three hits and two runs. No Syndergaard or an early lead for the Mets. Throwing Noah Syndergaard. Last night's hitting hero, Jace Peterson, leads off the Academy starting nine. Maven, Kelly Johnson, Nick Markakis in the top four. Uribe fifth. Brzezinski Simmons, Yuri Perez, Williams Perez. I'm looking forward to seeing this kid pitch. There's been a lot of hype about him, Tommy, and he was excellent in his last start against his former team. Yeah, making his eighth start in the year, two and four, three, seven, six ERA. But things have kind of been going a little south for him. You see, he got off to a great start in his first four starts, two and two with a one eight ERA, but Last three, 0 and 2 with a 6 7 5. So, certainly coming off a good start his last time out, looking to try and turn that thing around a little bit and get going back in the right direction. Yeah, that was a no decision against Toronto. Six innings, two hits, one run allowed. He walked two, but he struck out 11 batters in six innings, which is his high so far. 6 6, 240, and throws mid to upper 90s, curve, and a, and a changeup. And with command, he doesn't walk anybody. So, don't expect any help from Noah Syndergaard. Maybe he'll get some help from the Mets defense. At times, it's been porous. Tejada at short, Herrera at second. Duda and Campbell on the corners. Darno's behind the plate. Kadir, Lagaris, and Curtis Granderson left to right in the outfield. And yeah, talking to some of the Mets guys, you know, a little bit of his struggles his last few starts has been a little bit of familiarity now that people know what he's about. And a little bit of him not having as good a command of his off speed stuff. But his first pitch of the night was 96 miles an hour. Peterson took it for a ball. That one at the knees at 96. Well, the game has changed so much the last 10, 15 years. You used to see. Every team have one, maybe two guys that throw as hard as Noah Syndergaard, not just in rotation, maybe on their entire staff. Now, just about everybody's bullpen has three or four guys who can throw 95, and the Mets, with Harvey, DeGrom, and Syndergaard, have three starters who could throw in the mid 90s. Fly ball hit toward Kadir and left. He retreats, and that ball kept carrying, and he nearly misplayed it. One out. And the wind is blowing out at the ballpark tonight. Ball kept slicing on him too, so he had to change directions. Peter 
Anderson retired for Cameron Maben. Cameron was 0 for 3 last night. And a strike. Yeah, to your point, Chip. I can't. I can't. And again, I'll admit I don't follow the game as much as I used to. But you guys do more than me. I can't imagine there are any staff that have a better collection of arms than the Mets do at the moment in their starting rotation. With the three young guys in particular. Yeah. And Zach Wheeler on the DL. And Steven Matz in AAA. Yeah. And he's a power left-handed pitcher. That's very close for New York. And a sub-2 ERA at Vegas. Maybe still does. The pitch is downstairs for Maven. Two balls and a strike. What Terry Collins likes about this kid, not only does he throw hard, he throws strikes. He's not a young man who sprays the ball all over the strike zone. He's only walked eight men in his 41 innings. But he's promptly behind here now. Three balls and a strike. And he can hit too. He's an athlete. He does have a homer. Full count. 98. And it looks real easy. Yeah. There's, uh, again, another guy that's not, doesn't appear to be max effort getting it up there. Well, there's a walk. Maven takes a pass. He's at first with Kelly Johnson coming up. We mentioned Syndergaard is a very strong man. He grew four inches between his junior and senior year at high school. He got into the weight room as a high school player. He can squat 450 pounds. He can deadlift about 500 pounds. And his weight room prowess earned him the nickname Four. It's a nickname he hasn't shied away from. First pitch to Kelly is low and away, ball one. Texas seems to have the market on, don't they? Big, hard throwing pitchers. Especially right handers. Yeah. He's from Mansfield, Texas. Born there, still lives there. It's a suburb of Dallas. On ball, no strikes. Marcakis on deck. First, the pitch to Kelly. Up. This is how Noah Syndergaard got the nickname Four. I'm a believer. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Well, Kelly can hit a fastball. Let's see what he gets. Started and stopped, and it's sky foul. A ball and two strikes. The fellas mentioned how great Syndergaard pitched against Toronto. And strikeouts in his six innings. He ate up the left handed batters in that game. The lefties were 0 for 9 against him. Yeah, going into that game, lefties were wearing him out. Maven got a huge jump, and Kelly popped it up. Herrera drifting out, and Granderson will bail him out. Kelly had to swing. Yeah, it's a shame. Sorry. It's a shame yeah. he had two strikes on him. He had no choice. <laughs> Maybe it had a four stride head start. And then had to hustle back. So two outs. And Nick Marcakis. Oh. 
Nick at 298 as you see. He had an infield hit in the Braves eighth last night. That was the frame that saw Atlanta score both their runs. And they did that against four Mets pitchers. Ball one strike. He didn't see bank box tracks. Good pitch. He's got some life with that 97 98 also. It's not just straight. A roller toward first and an easy play will end the inning. Syndergaard has a shutdown first inning. The Brave strand Cameron Maven, 2 0 New York. Homer raises $12,500 for prostate cancer research. You can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. First inning has been a problem at times for Williams Perez. It was again for him tonight. Two singles, a hit batsman, and then another run scoring single among the first five Mets hitters that played at the game's first two runs. And so at the moment, Williams Perez sporting a 195 ERA. Our AT&T U-verse trivia question: What Braves rookie has the lowest ERA in a season with a minimum of 20 starts? And that's just as a starter. And note it says Braves. It could be Milwaukee, Boston, or Atlanta. Thanks for spreading that out over over 100 years. Yes, yeah. yeah. right. Really narrows it down. I long for the days when trivia was something simple like name a Met. Well, one more chance for that tomorrow. Perhaps Eric Campbell will lead things off. He's playing third base. And he's in another offensive dry spell. He's had a couple of those this year. Right now he's 0 for 13. A couple of weeks ago he endured an 0 for 28. That's why he's hitting 178. Minor foul. And out of play. Mets have won 18 of the 31 games Campbell has started this year. However, they really miss David Wright. They miss his leadership, they miss his defense, they miss what he does at the plate. 
this is home run power. And I, I got to think, guys, here we are, June 20th. There's been very little update on David Wright. No idea of when he's going to come back with what has been diagnosed as spinal stenosis. He's out in California, I think, right now, visiting with Dr. Watkins, who worked on him before when he had some problems with his back, visiting with his therapist. One of the things they told him is that June 1, they wanted him to shut it down, don't do anything, give everything a chance to calm down, get some inflammation out, and maybe they could find a course of action that would help him. Low it outside, full count. Don't Even walk, don't walk this guy. Out in front of the pitcher, Syndergaard, who waits on deck. He's hitting a buck 78, and he's 0 for 13. Make him put it in play. If he gets a hit, so be it. He rebade third. Picks and fires to first in time. One out. So here is Syndergaard. Ellis mentioned he has hit a homer that came May 27th against the Phillies. And Sean O'Sullivan is the man who served it up. His first major league hit was May 22nd. That came against Garrett Cole. Pretty impressive. Yeah. And a strike. Really surprised being a left-handed hitter, right-handed pitcher. He doesn't have something on that elbow. It's from Mansfield, Texas, man. True, but he is a big boy and all. But you get hit in that elbow. I don't care how big a boy you are. It hurts. <laughs> how big old boy are you? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in two. Max Scherzer, which it wishes the elbow guard was outlawed today. Mm -hmm. And that's strike three called. Two outs. Fourth strike out for Perez. If you didn't hear, Max Scherzer had a 2 2 pitch, two outs in the top of the ninth inning with the Pittsburgh Pirates and threw an inside pitch that Tabata seemed to lean into. And the pitch hit the elbow guard to spoil his perfect game bid. Josh Harrison, the next hitter, flied out to preserve the no hitter for Washington. Scherzer is first. Two outs for Granderson. Washington, by the way, won the ball game at home over the Pirates, six to nothing. Bryce Harper hit a home run. Pretty good back to back starts for Scherzer. I'd say he's locked in a little bit. I'd say. 26 strikeouts, one walk in his last two games. There's a chance the Braves might see him in the finale up in Washington. 1-1 one, one pitch. And that missed low, two balls and a strike. To center. And Maben makes a shoulder high catch. Perez got him one, two, three in the second. Juan Uribe leads off for Atlanta. It's two nothing New York.
moment ago. I don't think he seemed to be dead. Sure. Spoken like a true pitcher, and here's the final out. And Scherzer celebrates with the Washington Nationals. How dominant has he been? Max Scherzer has more hits as a hitter in his last two starts than his opponents. <laughs> That's, That's pretty, good. pretty good. Yeah. With that victory, the Nationals have pulled into a tie with the Mets at 36 and 33. Uribe, Persinski, and Andleton Simmons are coming up. And Juan found it back, Steve, right one. Maybe it's the blonde hair. Maybe it's the six six two forty. Maybe it's the ninety eight mile an hour gas. But there's a little hint of Lynn Barker in this guy. Doesn't quite have as high a leg kick as Lynn Barker does, but I know old Braves fans remember Lynn Barker after he was acquired from Cleveland, and Lynn Barker threw a perfect game once. It's upstairs. That was the deal that sent Brett Butler, Rick Bahena, and Brooke Jacoby to the Indians. Brett Butler was the player to be named in that deal. One two pitch and a bouncer toward short. Make first in plenty of time. Tejada has a strong arm. He showed it off. Uribe is out number one. This guy's already demonstrated a, a much better command, though, than Lynn Barker had. Lynn was all over the place. But like you said, Chip, only eight walks. That walk to Maven was his ninth in 42 innings. Pretty good for a young pitcher. A.J. Przinski bats. That's been around the big leagues as long as A.J. Przinski has been. To hear him speak so glowingly of Matt Whistler after his debut last night, I thought was really eye opening. He said he was nervous, Whistler that is, but he wasn't in awe of his first major league assignment. A.J. was very impressed with his mound presence. You guys saw that immediately. His ability to hit the glove. AJ could work all the quadrants of the strike zone. He said, Oh, by the way, this stuff's real good too, which yeah. always helps. Yeah, that guy was pleasantly surprised by how good his stuff was. You know, and and, and, and I felt like even though, you know, I say even though he's throwing 92, 94, it seemed like a a 92, 94 that got on the hitters a lot more so than than you would think. If that makes sense. I mean, with today's guys that are throwing yeah. 98, 99, you know, 94 doesn't seem so so overpowering, but he got it on top of guys in a hurry. No there swing. are guys, though, that may be short on stuff, and I'm not saying he is, but those guys that might be short on stuff but are long on competitive nature and bulldog, I'll take those guys every time. I'm with you 100%. Away. One of the lighter moments during the game last night, AJ said, was trying to keep Whistler loose and relaxed. He started talking about college football. AJ said, Wait a minute, you're from Ohio. You must be an Ohio State fan. He said, Nope, Notre Dame. <laughs> Which, <laughs> well, that's kind of odd because yeah. Chan Ho looked it up last night. He had committed to go to Ohio State. He said he's a Notre Dame fan. I'll be darned. Huh. Sign with him, right? Thanks, Jan. Full count pitch for AJ. And fouled straight back. AJ, of course, a big Florida Gator fan.
Syndergaard's 29th pitch is on the way. Brzezinski bounced it fair down the right field line. He'll around first. He's chugging for second. Granderson has to dig it out. A.J. around second. He's going for third. Here's the throw. He's safe. <laughs> they flipped him the ball. I love it. Jay Lane gave him the ball. That was great. Picking him up and laying him down. Yep. He was thinking three all the way. I think I can. I think I can. Probably wish it right around now that we're playing youth baseball rules and we could have the courtesy runner for the catcher yeah. here. <laughs> That's uh, great. 24th career triple. So Simmons represents the tying run. Ball outside. One ball, no strikes. This is the last guy the Mets want to see up there in run scoring situations. Andleton has killed them this year. He's 15 for 35 with six RBIs against New York pitching. It's now an even count. He just wants to play pepper with somebody in the infield that's not a pitcher or a third baseman. They're playing back, they'll concede a run. Just get that one guy in here, get a couple more later. Oh, up and in. That'll keep you loose. That missed. Three balls, one strike. As we mentioned, Syndergaard has not won on the road. He has not won a night game this year. Both of those things are in play in Atlanta this evening. Little pop. That might drop. It will drop. And Simmons comes through to haunt the Mets again. A bloop single brings home Krasinski, and it's a one-run game. In on him, just fought it off and found some pasture. Shallow as Lagaris plays, it's hard to drop one in in front of him. Think of beauty. Seven RBIs for Simmons against the Mets. Brzezinski looking for some oxygen. Yep. And Yuri Perez in the batter's box. Miss. Syndergaard hasn't found his rhythm yet. 20 strikes, 16 balls. And a run in for the Braves here in the second. Just inside, two balls and a strike. Dan Worthen, the pitching coach for the Mets. He's been there a long time. Good guy. He's a good one. Yes, he is. Good. 
Heavy workload for Syndergaard on a muggy night. A Brzezinski triple, a Simmons single. Now Yuri Perez. Stop Darno, full count. That's something to keep an eye on if this game stays close. Travis at times has had trouble blocking balls in the dirt. This Williams Perez is next. This is only the eighth start for Syndergaard. Only two stolen base attempts against him, and both were successful. So we'll see if Andleton's running here on a full count. Another half step. He is going. And the pitch is rolled slowly toward Campbell at third. Tough play. Throws on a hop and in time. Perez called out at first, Simmons at second, and the Braves are going to take a look at this. And I thought for a brief second that Andrelton was going to try to take third. Looked out. Like he's, yeah. his stride, his foot was above the bag. And threw on the brakes when he saw Tejada hustle over to cover third. So no appeal by the Braves, not enough to challenge the call. Runner in scoring position is Simmons for Williams Perez. Williams has a couple of hits so far this year. And looks for his first run batted in. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. See some Mike Fulton Evich, you know, Syndergaard. A little bit. Twenty seven pitches in the inning. And now the two two. There you go. Yes, he did. Perez is struck out. And that ends the inning. A.J. Brzezinski triples down the right field line. Simmons brought him home with a blooper. And after two Braves are down a run. It's a 2 1.
You know, A.J. Brzezinski has been playing in the big leagues for so long because of talent, but he also has a very special personality, and I think we all know that. And pretty much every inning of every game when he comes in or comes in off the bases, he has plenty to say heading into the dugout. Well, coming in from that triple, he had nothing to say, and I think the entire dugout was waiting to hear from him, so he took a few steps in and just screamed out, Trainer! But that was truly tongue-in-cheek. Now, A.J. had a triple last season when he was a Red Sox. He had a triple the season before that when he was a member of the Rangers. So maybe this is one triple for the year. But when he went back out to catch for this half inning, Bo Porter checked with him and kind of gave him a look. A.J. just turned into full A.J. and says, hey, man, I'm fine. Don't even look at me. I'm okay. I'm going to catch. Chip? Thank you, Andre. I, I still love the fact that Jerry Lane tried to give him the baseball third base remember the quote from laser baker years ago about maddox hitting a triple and said it was now it replaced the kentucky derby as the most exciting two minutes in sports <laughs> that might apply right here i gave it a run for its money didn't it so it gives new life to williams perez first two innings 49 minutes See if Perez can settle into a routine now. He's set down the last five minutes. It's happened to him before. Early inning struggles and then collects himself and goes merrily along. Tejada, Duda, and Kadair coming up and a strike. In the air to right and playable for Marcakis. Let's go back to May 25th when the Braves were in Los Angeles and played the Dodgers. LA sent seven men to the plate, scored a run against Williams Perez. He went five shutout innings after that. Braves lost that game six to three, but Perez one run over six innings of work. Let's see if he can. Not give the Mets anything else. Get after Syndergaard and their bullpen. Retired the last six in order. And he's got Duda up there. Right now Lucas is really fighting it for New York. For them to score, he's got a hit. Right now he's not doing a lot of damage. One hit on the road trip. That was a home run up in Toronto. Two seamers sinking down and away, and then he backed it up with a changeup in the same spot. It looked to Duda like the same pitch. Oh, good try there. Working so fast, it's hard to work in these PNC Bank Fox tracks. Should have gotten that call. Got that one though, two and two. Gets hit. Two Mets have been plunked. Could I or now Duda? Right on his pocket. No, down lower. Krasinski have a little chuckle as they lock horns for a second time. And Michael pops one up. Uribe calls for it and makes the catch two out. And here's the villain, Travis Darno, a two run single with the bases loaded in the Mets first. That was the tenth time Dude has been hit by a pitch that's second in the league behind Rizzo. Of the Cubs, who's been hit 14 times. Darno 
Arsenal with an RBI now in 13 of 19 games for the Mets. He's up to 16 runs batted in. And a strike call. He's had much better command of his fastball since the first inning. Ground ball right side. Chase gives ground and gets his man. And Perez out of trouble in the third inning. Top of the order up for the Braves. One run ball game. Price every day. Big crowd at the ballpark in Atlanta today. We had the Braves Country 5K race earlier. We've got the ball game and then the Boys to Men concert afterward tonight. Let's see if Atlanta can continue to chop away against Noah Syndergaard, who's got some really interesting splits. Home versus road, much like the rest of the Mets ball club. I was going to say he he kind of mirrors what's been going on with this club. Is it or is it the are the pitchers getting those results because of what the offense is doing or is it the other way around? I don't know, but in any event, the Mets need to figure something out on the road if they're going to continue to contend. They're 10 and 22 away from New York. Conversely, 26 and 11 at City Field. And they head to Milwaukee after this series concludes tomorrow here in Atlanta. Syndergaard missed up and away. One ball, no strikes. He's be playing the Brewers while the Braves will be playing the Nationals in Washington. That's another reason why these three games are so important. Milwaukee having an awful year. Nationals at the moment tied for first in the East. Peterson flat out to left. He's 0 for 1. Quickly, 3 and 0. And with that base on balls, Jace Peterson takes over the second spot and most walks earned by a Brave hitter this year. He's now one ahead of Braves first baseman Freddie Freeman. Jace's on base percentage. Up around 360. Well, he and Maven and Freeman and Mark Akis, all four doing a great job of getting on base. Maven drew the first walk in the first inning for the Braves. Let's see if Atlanta thinks about putting Peterson in motion here. He's seven out of 14 in steals. He has a big lead. Not going. And Maven backed away from ball one. 
Now Peterson's running, swing and a miss. Nobody covered second base. Nobody. And Jace all the way around to third base. I hope he stepped on second. I don't think I've ever seen that that blatantly missed by a middle infield in the big leagues. You got it. No, you got it. I mean, nobody moved. And I think Terry Collins is out to check exactly that, Joe. Did Jace Peterson step on second? And he did. He definitely did. No doubt he did. It's a stolen base and an error. The error goes to the catcher. That's a tough error. One ball, two strikes. And up the middle. Runs going to score. Close play at first and Maven out by an eyelash. Maven, though, drives home his 34th run. Peterson scores to make it a 2 2 game. Another close play at first. Another good inside out swing by Maven on a pitch inside. Oh, baby. Huh. Yeah, that's that one with the ball, the glove. Is it in there? Is it yeah. not? I don't, I don't know. And the key, again, not enough to change the call, which was out. Braves cash in a walk, a steal. A failure to cover second base and a ground out to tie it up. And Kelly Johnson, the hitter, sprays that over the Mets dugout out of play. It's 0-2. And yeah, as big a jump as Peterson had, they weren't going to throw him out of second anyway, but certainly would have kept him from going to third if anybody had covered, and that run would still be out there. One ball, two strikes. That's another question I've got about the Mets ball club. With their middle infield defense, that's going to get exposed over the next 90, 95 games if it's not improved. One ball, two strikes for Kelly Johnson. And back to the screen out of play. Yeah, if you're having. You know, you make physical errors. That's one thing. Mental, mental errors, obviously, are, are always hard to swallow. And as the game, as the season gets on, it gets harder, it gets longer. You know, you guys are tired. They're making more and more bad decisions. You're going to see more and more of that. I, I don't know if this would work or not. But were I a manager, I would always have my shortstop covered with less than two outs. Because if there is a hit and run, you're always taught to try to hit the ball the other way through the hole on the right side where the first baseman's holding the runner on. And the reason I would have him shortstop cover is and it's very rare that a guy can go first to third on a base hit to left field. If the left fielder's doing his job and charging the ball, it's hard to see him pick the ball up knowing he might throw you out at third. And that's why I would automatically have my shortstop cover. Kelly on a check swing strikeout. Nick Markakis bats with the bases empty. 
2 2. We're in the Braves third. Game two of the series and a very different feel to this game than last night. DeGrom and Whistler were throwing strike after strike. That hasn't been the case for Syndergaard and Williams Perez. And Marquez sprays one the other way. His first hit of the night. And the third for the Braves in the game. He could cover that pitch. That's a good pitch. That's just a good piece of hitting. You tip your hat to the hitter there. Uribe is 0 for 1 tonight. No strikes. Well, Nick Marcakis has one stolen base. He stole it opening night in Miami. I'm not sure he's attempted one since. Might be sitting on it. But I think I'd see if they have it figured out who's covering. I was going to say, maybe he's thinking, well, nobody covers, so. Ball two. Or one, your rebate. Two balls and a strike. It's not Terry Collins talking to Tim Tuffle, the third base coach. Tuffle more than likely works with the infielders. Terry is an old middle infielder himself. He was probably just confirming who was supposed to be covering on that stolen base before that those guys get to the dugout. I would imagine that's not a happy feeling if you're one of the middle infielders having to walk in after play like that. Well and the pitcher every time that guy gets on first base you always see the pitcher look at going to the middle infielders who's letting him know who's covering on a comebacker. It wouldn't be much different on a stolen base. Deuce is wild for Uribe. Where's number two as well. And a two two game pitch. Back to the screen. Is still alive. Back to back long innings for Noah Syndergaard. The 2 2 is scorched into the seats to the left side beyond the Mets dugout. One of the things that we're, we're seeing too, Chip, to go back to what you said earlier about every team having some guys that really throw hard, and certainly Syndergaard does. But if your secondary pitches aren't anything other than average, these big league hitters are going to let the fastball go and sit on that off speed stuff. And especially if you can't throw it for strikes. Well, Joe said Mark Hakus has been either sitting on it or saving up. He'll get a chance to <laughs> run now with a full count. Due to plays behind him at first. There he goes. And the pitch popped up. That's headed for the Braves dugout. No play. Syndergaard's about to make his 70th pitch. That's bullpen's a little short tonight. Juris Familia may not be available tonight or tomorrow. 
Oh, really? He's got a groin problem. They'd like to rest him until Tuesday, if possible. 3 2 count. And it's tipped and caught by Darno. And that'll end the inning. Some miscommunication in the Mets' middle infield cost them a second run. We go to the fourth inning. New life for Atlanta. A piece. We've admired how close and tight this Braves clubhouse has been all season long, but maybe nothing more tight as the former Padres, Matt Whistler and Jace Peterson, roommates in the minors, and Cameron Maven had this to say about Jace Peterson. Yes, yeah, my that's my brother from another. Uh, you know, we've been together for for a few years now, man, and we've just always had that kind of connection. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he's got my back, and I got and I have his. And I tell you something else. Uh, Cameron pointed out that Jace Peterson is just starting to become a second baseman. He hasn't played this position very long, so to watch his growth is something Cameron certainly admires. But, uh, Chip, the tightness of this entire clubhouse is something to see when you're on our side. Could agree more. And with so many new faces, so many <laughs> new position players, new pitchers. Come together pretty nicely for Atlanta. The Braves start play tonight, two games under 500. I would venture to say that with all the turnover that the Braves have had in personnel, it's it's a 180 degree turn in the clubhouse too. Juan Lagares leads off for New York. If just tuning in and wondering what's up with the different uniforms tonight, it is Heritage Weekend here in Atlanta. The Mets are wearing. The togs of the Brooklyn Royal Giants. As a high hopper to Kelly Johnson at first. It's an easy play. One out. The Royal Giants played from 1905 to 1942 as a member of the National Association and in the Eastern Colored League. They captured championships in 1909, 1910, 1914, and 1916. Boy, they had it working then. The Braves are wearing. The uniforms of the Atlanta Black Crackers. Who played from 1919 to 1952. They were originally founded were the Crackers as the Atlanta Cubs, but they knew they'd never win a championship in about 100 years, so they changed the name. <laughs> Just thought you'd like to know that. Strike one to Dilson Herrera. Even count. Black Crackers played at Old Ponce de Leon Park. Or as my dad called it in his first big first minor league game when Jack McKeon was the manager. Hello again everybody and welcome to Ponce de Leon Park. <laughs> That's what I called it when I came to town. <laughs> Did you? And he was quick to correct me. Yeah. Strike three to Herrera. I'd still be thinking about that play in second. He did. He did exactly what you just did. He pushed his glasses up and went, uh, Joe. 
around here. <laughs> That's what he said. You know, yeah. the, the general manager, I can't remember the gentleman's name, said, hey, Skip, welcome to town. You did a great job. But one thing, what's his Ponce de Leon stuff? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Pops figured it out pretty quickly. And that's true. Jack McKeon, Trader Jack, manager of the Padres and Marlins, was the manager of the Crackers. Way back when, back in the early 1960s. Out of play foul by Eric Campbell. Two quick outs, and Perez, after a shaky first, settling in. I've seen a picture of Ponce, I, know I can't even say it right, <laughs> uh, of Ponce Park when it was packed for an exhibition game. Uh, I think um, was it the Dodgers that stopped and played an exhibition game. Well, you wouldn't know because you don't know what picture I'm talking about. Uh, but it's like in the 50s, I'll say, and that place there were people hanging from the rafters really? for that exhibition game. Ground ball slowly hit toward short. If I'm correct, the legend was there's an old magnolia tree in center field. It still stands out on Ponce de Leon Avenue. Great part of baseball history in Atlanta. We're tied at two tonight. <laughs> they flipped him the ball. That was our Toyota key play of the game. Williams Perez gave up a couple of first inning runs. Braves have scratched their way back to tie it up. It's 2 2 game, and the flying feet of A.J. Brzezinski will lead off the Braves' fourth inning tonight. Man, the ballpark is packed tonight. This is great. Great atmosphere on a pretty night. Great concert tonight. Boys to men. Stan? Yep. Yep. I like them. I still can't remember the name of that song that's my favorite that yesterday. I can't forget yesterday. How's that title go? Chan? <laughs> Wait a minute. Chan knows. You forgot the name of a song that says you can't forget? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Is that it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was really worried yeah. for a second. <laughs> As I'm all over it. Yeah, yeah. We all know what you meant. We think. <laughs> Strike one for AJ Przinsky. Simmons to follow. Yuri Perez after that. By the way, we're going to have to keep an eye on Andre Aldridge. After the game, because there may be an additional member of Boys to Men if we're not careful. He'll be up on stage with them. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. I can tell you, I, I can tell you, I know all the lyrics, so there's no need. I, I can't be up there with him. No need. 
I think you could just slip right up there with him, Andre. Nobody would try to stop you. Broken bad. AJ's two for two. Go for two. Okay, he's halfway to the cycle. Yep. Got the hard one out of the way. One shudders to think where the Braves would be without AJ presents. Oh my. Man, oh man. Here's Andleton Simmons. He had another chance to do some damage to the Mets. He had a bloop single that scored the Braves' first run. That was in his last at bat. Strike on the inside corner. Washington beat the Pirates six nothing. Max Scherzer a no hitter. A hit batsman with two strikes in the ninth inning. Prevented a perfect game. For the Nationals righty. Colorado beat Milwaukee today five one. Miami leads in Cincinnati three nothing. Cardinals and Phillies tied at one in the sixth. A rare close game for the Phillies of late. Amazing stat on the Phillies who we'll see here on the Fourth of July holiday. In the month of June, the Phillies have been outscored by their opponents 100 to 53. This month. They lost 12 4 last night. Tough to win that way. Ooh. One ball, two strikes. And Simmons with a little flare. That's going to drop. Brzezinski's going to try, and Lagares with a bare hand left the ball behind. They're at second and third with nobody out. Mets are self-destructing defensively here in the last couple of innings. Two flares in a row for Andrelton. Thing of beauty. And instead of the glove, he went with the hand, looked up too soon. That'll get you every time. Look at AJ though, he was going. He didn't know he was going to miss it. That's one of those plays that Johnny Gomes talked about Joe in the opening days of the season. This team will go first to third. They're going to force the opposition to make the proper play. Put pressure on the defense. And that time, Ligaris couldn't. It's a single and an error on Ligaris, allowing Simmons to reach second base. Now the eight and nine hitters are up for Atlanta in a tie game at two. First error of the year by the Gold Glove center fielder. See how their infield plays this. Corners are in. That's bounced off the plate. That's going to get a run home. Throw to first, not in time. This is amazing. It's three to two, and they're at the corners with nobody out. First RBI for Yuri Perez, and if you're in the other dugout or if you're on the mound for the Mets right now, you're wondering what's going on here. Yeah, what else is going to go wrong? Right off the plate. Joe told you last night Perez can fly. He was a 28 stolen base man at AAA, and his speed paid off there. Now a chance for Perez to move him to second with a bunt. And it's back to the screen.
Six hits for the Braves. The bunt popped up. Diving try. Darno. He couldn't get there. Good effort, too far to go. Bo Porter with a chat with Williams Perez. We'll see if he's bunting or swinging, or if it was a suggestion about how to better get this ball on the ground. Well, bunting 95 or 97 is not going to be easy. We'd love to see him bunt at the third. Instead, he bunts it back to the mound, and everybody's safe at first and third. Should have dropped that. Yep. When you're 22 and you're yeah. scrambling, yeah, that's the last thing yeah, that crosses your mind. Your brain's not working that fast. Uh -uh. Joe, that game you were talking about, with the Dodgers, yeah, Ponce de Leon Park, April 8th, 1949. It was a game of great historic importance in the state of Georgia. Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella. Came to town with the Brooklyn Dodgers to play the Crackers in an exhibition game. It was the first integrated sporting event in the state. That's awesome. Well, it's a wonderful picture just because there's just people everywhere, probably up in that magnolia tree. As you can imagine, sadly, in those times, there were many who did not want to see that game played because of the Racial injustice of the time as Jace Peterson hits. Earl Mann was the team president of the Crackers, who stood firm with Dodgers general manager Branch Rickey, insisting that the three game series go on as planned. And one reason why Earl Mann insisted that Robert Woodruff and the Coca Cola Company, the folks who owned the Crackers, insisted the games be played here in their hometown. So that series April 8th 1949 yeah, well, it's in keeping with Heritage Week in here you know it, that picture that ballpark that day be a good sign crackers a proud team they won more pennants than any team in the Southern Association ironically enough they were once called the Yankees of the South one ball, one strike, and a shot deep toward right. Granderson, though, is going to get there. He'll make the catch. Simmons will tag at third. He will score, and the Braves end their lead. Jace Peterson does it again. Braves put the ball in play against a hard throwing youngster. And Atlanta with two in the fourth now leads by two. Well, you saw that percentage of getting the guy in from third base, less than two outs. 87% for Jace Peterson. That just went up. That's an awesome number when the National League average is 51 percent. Things are kind of quiet out in the left field. Just the way we like it. Decision may be coming for Terry Collins. Remember he took Jacob DeGrom out of the ball game after seven and a third innings around 95 pitches. Syndergaard's spot is due first in the fifth for the Mets. And that bullpen is busy. And a close play at first. I'd like to see Yuri Perez run. I'd like to see what kind of jump he gets. He's five for five in the big leagues in that category. And as Chip told you, 28 swipes at Gwinnett. Yeah, I've had a couple guys get huge jumps already, so mm -hmm. take a shot. Got a good lead. A little late and sliced foul down the right side by Maven. No balls and a strike. There's one two punch of Peterson and Mabin has been terrific to watch. Both of those men have RBIs tonight. Peterson hitting in the 280s. Maven in the 290s.
Ravens scored 27 runs. Peterson's scored 28. 55 of the 291 runs scored by the Braves club. One ball, one strike. Fly ball left. And this one's playable for Kadire. He's got it. Another Mets miscue defensively. Might spell the end of the night for Noah Syndergaard. The Braves score two in the fourth and lead four to two. It's 4-2 Atlanta. Time for our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot feature. The Braves record by the number of runs allowed this year. And again, there's that demarcation between three and four. When they allow three or less, tough to beat. And Williams Perez will face John Mayberry Jr. leading off. Inning number five for New York. Syndergaard, four innings, six hits, four runs, two walks, three strikeouts. His defense did not help him tonight. Two Mets errors. And after a brilliant performance in Toronto, he's on the short end in the middle innings. Mayberry Jr. hit a homer against the Braves in New York in a spot start. He's had the most pinch hit assignments for the Mets this year. He's two for 19. Perez has fallen behind him 3 0 after the Braves gave him the lead. Shut down innings. Don't start it with a walk. Strike zone and Williams got the call. Three and one. Foul in third. Full count. Quick-footed Jerry Lane getting out of the way. 
Fly ball center Canicorn for Cameron Maven. Nice comeback for Perez, who was behind 3 0. And oh. Mayberry is the first out. And here's Curtis Granderson, our home depot tools from the dugout feature. Most pitches seen per plate appearance. Second only to Bryce Harper. What oh, tied with Harper? Beg your pardon. Nick Markakis there in the top five as well. Guys, make your work to get him out. Perez has retired. 12 of the last 13 he's faced. The only interruption due to his hit batsman. One ball, no strikes. This is the way I like watching Williams Perez work. He can't wait to get the ball back from AJ. It was funny. I was just going to say that's funny how he got that first out of the inning, and now it's like, okay, give him the ball. Here we go. Here we go. Up to that point with Mayberry, he was a little bit more deliberate, trying not to walk him. He seems to be a tough minded kid. He's 24. Another chance for Cameron. He's going to have to sprint toward the wall this time. And he can't get it. Curtis Granderson just stroked that baby over the center field fence. His ninth homer. The Mets have pulled a run closer. It's now four to three. Hanging back, back door breaking ball. His first homer since June seventh at Arizona. He hit two homers that day against the Diamondbacks. Perez has given up three homers, all the lefties. Miguel, excuse me, Ruben Tejada hits one in the air toward left. Yuri Perez retreats. And he's got it for the second out. Tell you what, with those Mets fans making the noise with the noisemakers and the chanting, it sounds a lot like a. A Caribbean World Series game. Yeah, it does. They've kept things lively out and left. I mean, is, is there like a Mets club in Atlanta, or do these people charter a plane down here? I don't know. I've never seen this before. There's usually a lot of Mets fans, but they're along the third baseline. We have to get Andre on the case and find out. Well, that's hazardous duty. So I was kind of say, we better be careful out there. With all those Mets fans <laughs> in left. As Lucas Duda bats, he has struck out and been hit by a pitch. Well, maybe they're trying to make the Mets feel like they're in, at home. Need to try something. Stole the chanting cadence of all the Yankees. It's not very original. One ball, two strikes. Duda laid off. Dyer is on deck. And he walks.
First walk of the night for Perez. He's hit a couple of batters, and Michael Kadaya represents the go ahead run. This is a spot where Kadaya is especially dangerous. Michael's knocked in 28 runs. Half of them have come in two out situations for New York. That's where he faces Perez now. And he had a good cut, fouled it away. Strike one. There's that first swing hack we were expecting in the first inning. Uh huh. By the way, I think it was the fifth pitch to Granderson that he hit out to Mr. 4.24. Another chance for Maven. He's there, and that retires the side. Curtis Granderson's ninth homer brings the Mets a little closer. We head to the home fifth. Johnson Marcakis and Uribe coming up. Three in the middle game of our series. You see the two Mets errors. They have been big ones tonight. Nobody covered it second on a stolen base attempt by Jace Peterson. And then Anderson dumped in a hit last inning, and with Brzezinski going first to third, Lagaris committed his first error of the year and put the Braves in business to score a couple more. Three earned runs among the four allowed by Noah Syndergaard. And Atlanta leads four to three. And we'll look at Jack Leathersitch. He's on for the 17th time. And as you see, this young man's pitching very good baseball for New York. And we saw him a couple of times in uh, New York, but it was usually just for specialty, just to get one lefty out of a tough spot. But low 90s with a slider. Got a couple of lefties to greet him first here in the fifth. Kelly Johnson, Nick Marcakis first is high. Some of our fans on Twitter have told me what the deal is with those obnoxious orange clad people in left. That is the seven line. It's a Mets fan club. They travel to select games with the New York Ball Club. There are between 750 and 1,000 of them here at Turner Field tonight. That's great. Ball one strike. It's one and two. And we just riled them up because they just saw themselves on TV. Uh huh. <laughs> Brian Woodrum, don't do that again. <laughs> one and two. Did he go? No. He did not. Kelly's been a little bit in between lately. He's such a good fastball hitter. But he's had counts where he's had to really battle, try to fight off breaking stuff, and then maybe he's a little late on fastballs. He's having to deal with a lefty here. And he just took strike three at the knees. And that's out number one. And we 
we poke fun at the Mets fans with tongue planted firmly in she. I think I think that's great. I, I, I really admire the fact that the Braves have such loyal fans too. You see it all the time. They travel whenever the Braves are on the road, although we don't normally see them packs of 750 or no. a thousand. <laughs> yeah. That's now, great. You, you want to have some road team representation when you're going to somebody else's park for sure. Makes it a lot more fun. I remember when I first got here. We played the Mets, we played the Cubs, we played the Cardinals. It may as well have been a road game. Really? Yeah. But they're having a great time out there. Yeah, they are. Except for that poor guy <laughs> with his kid with the Braves cap. <laughs> One ball, one strike. Are they cheering where we're on TV? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's tipped and caught by Dono. Two men are out. And here's Juan Uribe, our Lowe's never stop improving feature. Two outs, bases empty for the Braves. It's been good things since he came over to Atlanta. All his numbers better in a Braves uniform than they were in a Dodgers uni. Got some big hits for the Braves, too. That's part of the that's part of the fun story with this team this year as well. We've talked so much about Maven and Peterson getting their opportunity to play every day over here and making the most of it. Uribe doing the same thing since he's been over here. Kind of a forgotten man in LA and done good work here. That's because former Matt Justin Turner's gotten red hot. A lot of playing time for the Dodgers at third base. Played great against the Braves when we were out west. Four three Atlanta game. And your event backs away from ball three. AJ Prasinski is on deck, another left handed bat. He made him throw a strike. What'd you call that that group of Mets fans, Chip? The Seven Line seven, Army. Seven Line Army is what they call themselves. Apparently, they bought those tickets a couple months ago. I bet they were the Seven Deep Army at the bar before the game too. <laughs> They're gonna be exhausted when the game's over. Three balls, two strikes. And out of play. You gotta get a group like that. Call it Glavin's Gang or something. No. No? No. I don't even travel with you guys to do games. I'm not going to travel to go I'm not watch. Seeing you have to go. Oh, okay. Like your fans, they could show up in force and help support the club on the road. No, he says. Leatherson strikes out the side in the fifth. You don't have to go. Lighten up, Francis. Four three to score.
Chase leaving this bad boy, and we've been talking a little bit about the sea of orange out here in left field. And uh, Chip, you're absolutely right. The group is known as the Seven Line Army because the Seven Line is a subway that takes you out to uh, City Field out there in New York City. Now, I was going to put one of them on, but the first guy I talked to tried to sell me a Rolex for $10, so I figured that probably wouldn't be a good thing to go on our family network right now. But there are folks from all over the Northeast, folks from all over the Southeast, and they just picked a Saturday night game here at Turner Field because Saturday is an easy trial game, but as we all know well and good, they're going to leave here disappointed. Chip? <laughs> I love it, man. Right. They see that camera and they start chanting in unison, we're on TV. <laughs> that was great. The security guard's out there the only way to have a yeah, fun. He's, he's having a blast. <laughs> he forgot his earplugs. Yeah. So here we go to the sixth inning. Darno, Lagares, and Dilson Herrera for the Mets. Williams has to pitch a little tougher now. He's got a one run lead. Darno, a two run single in the first. Anderson with a home run in the fifth. Braves got a single run in the second, third, and two in the fourth to chase Syndergaard. Fly toward left. Perez on the run. Still going. Still going. That ball is going to carry out. It went straight up and then straight out. And Travis Darno has just tied the game. There's a lot of wind up there high. I'm telling you, he can hit. There may be some defensive difficulties at times, but that guy can hit. Change up. Yep. And a bad one. Thought he might have just got under it, but like I said, that wind, it just kept going. So we're tied 4 4. Here's the Harris. Garris at 273 is 0 for 2 tonight. 6 7, 8 hitters for New York, 0 for 6. Fly ball to right. And Marquinhos will catch for the first out. And David Hartsman loosening in the Braves' pen. The way Massa, Johnson, and Grilly have worked together in the seventh, eighth, and ninth in recent days, you knew that the staff, Freddie and Roger, just want to try to get Williams through this sixth inning, turn it over to the pen as he's over the 90 pitch mark. All no strengths. Unfortunately, Duda took the lead away. Or excuse me, Darnell. Inside. Two balls, no strikes. It wasn't so long ago that the Mets and Braves was as big a rivalry as there was in Major League Baseball. Went by the boards when the Braves continued their run of success, and the Mets, with the Bobby Valentine left, really at times struggled to keep pace in the division. And the Phillies ascended. They've dropped off. Now Washington has ascended. And along with Washington has come the Mets this year. I for one hope this is a rivalry that that does get re-energized. Tommy, what year was it? Do you remember when um, the bases loaded walk with the Braves advanced the Braves into the postseason? I don't remember if it was a division or if it was a. It must have been the NLCS with the Mets. Yeah, it was NLCS with the Mets. Was it 99? Yeah. Kenny Rogers walked in the runner. Yeah, that walked Andrew Jones. Yeah. Is tiring a bit. Roger McDowell out for a chat that'll give Ardsma a few extra tosses. With Eric Campbell coming up. And this is why Mets fans are so excited about their club. It's been a frustrating run of six years of sub 500 baseball in New York for the National League Ball Club. The Madoff mess didn't help. 
big contracts that didn't work out didn't help. But they're starting to come out of that with a system that's beginning to develop players. They've made some terrific trades to acquire pitching. And as things stand now, they're tied for the lead in the division and tied in this game for four. Yeah, and despite that, that stretch of losing seasons, they were patient enough last year not to worry about rushing Matt Harvey back. They knew they weren't going anywhere, and while a few innings wouldn't have hurt in September to check him out, they said no. I think he did pitch a few innings in instructional league, and that was it. They shut him down. Runner goes, hit and run on, fouled away a strike. And we will finally see Matt Harvey tomorrow late afternoon. Check your schedules. It's a 5 o'clock start on Father's Day Sunday. Nothing and one for Campbell. Runner holds and he didn't get it. Travis Darno's fourth homer has tied things up. We're in the sixth. 106 is the season high in pitches for Perez at Los Angeles. Is about to make his 100th. Bouncing ball, Uribe picks, fires to second one. On the first, how about that double play? Woo. Uribe started it. Peterson turned another spectacular play at second. And the Mets may be challenging this call at first. We'll find out as we head to the home sixth in a moment. Take on the Dodgers. The first 20,000 fans through the gates will get a bobblehead featuring Freddie Freeman hugging Johnny Gomes. Don't miss out on this limited edition bobblehead by visiting Braves.com slash tickets to get your seats today. Freddie needed a hug today. I was going to say, Freddie needs a hug today. Yeah. Big time. He was a little cranky today that he's not out there again. That wrist still sore. Maybe tomorrow. We'll hope. Leathersitch is throwing nothing but strikes. He struck out the side in the fifth inning. He's ahead of A.J. Przinski, who's got two hits and has scored two Atlanta runs. 
That's right. You saw that graphic there and just joined us. He has a triple tonight. Two balls and a strike. Look out. Whoa, that bounced in the Braves dugout. Almost came back. Was that Whistler standing down there? Almost got him. I hope it didn't get Alex Wood. He's already been hit on the head once this week. That was up in Boston. And it did get Whistler. Jays ready to go now. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on or out. And that's past Bo Porter. Foul will do it again. Cardinals five, Phillies one in the seventh. That was a 1 1 game for a while in Philadelphia. Miami's up 5 0 in Cincinnati in the eighth. Giants are beating the Dodgers again in LA. 6 2 San Fran. Pitch. Can't beat the Giants. Mr. Posey hit a grand slam last night. And today it's Tim Hudson and Frias, Carlos Frias for the Dodgers. 3 2 pitch. That's out of play. Well, today I posed that our own personal trivia question to you guys. Braves are 14th in the National League in home runs. Who's last? And the answer is. The Philadelphia Phillies. You guys were all over it, but what a shocker that they've hit fewer homers, especially in that ballpark. I was going to say, for no other reason than that ballpark. Bouncing ball the other way. A.J. Krasinski's got a three hit night. That's two. He's, he's on his way to second. Could I have dropped it twice? Krasinski's a homer away from the cycle tonight. Mistake upstairs, even as good as leather such as pitching, you make a mistake upstairs, something the hitter can make something happen with it. So AJ Prasinski is three for three, and Andleton Simmons is two for two. And in the batter's box. And Terry Collins is going to go get his lefty. Heather Sitch faced four, struck out three, and allowed the A.J. Pruszynski extra base hit. Atlanta's in business. Go ahead, run in scoring position on a hot night. We'll see how this works out in a 4 4 game in a moment.
Justin Simmons set to stand in for Atlanta. Before he does, let's check out our Coors Light cold hard facts. In game two of our series with the Mets, lefty righty splits for the Atlanta offense. You know, in one regard, that low batting average against lefties is because they don't see many. They see left handers, so you might get two or three at bats a night against a lefty. But I think they've only seen nine left handed starters on the season. Well, they got to see a, a right hander with whom they're not very familiar. This is Logan Verrett. He was originally with the Mets. Baltimore took him in the Rule 5 draft. Texas claimed him off waivers. He pitched in four games with the Rangers this year. And then on May 4th, he was returned to the Mets and sent to Las Vegas, where he went 2 0 in 11 games, including four starts. Fastball slider change. His fastball high 80s, low 90s. Up the middle, knocked down, and that's all the Mets could get. Great effort by Ruben Tejada. That might have saved a run for the moment, but Simmons is three for three. And just continues to collect hits against the Mets like there's nothing to it. Great effort there by Tejada. Slider that yep. fooled a little bit, just a one handed swing. But a magic wand against the Mets. Brian Woodrum makes a good point. Our producer, Verrett's wearing the number of Dylan G, who was designated for assignment five days ago by New York. Yuri Perez, the batter. He pushes a button. First base side. Duda flips to the back. Pitcher not there. He slipped and fell, and all hands are safe. The speed of Perez pays off for a second time tonight. A bunt hit, and they're loaded with nobody out. Beautiful bunt. The whole purpose of this was just to get. Runners at second and third with one out. He turned it into a base hit. And Freddy Gonzalez will go to his bench. Pitcher spot is due. Williams Perez will be lifted for Pedro Siriaco, who's been swinging a hot bat as we told you yesterday. Had a great series in the absence of Andrelton Simmons. Had a pinch hit single last night. Field in. This guy throws a lot of sliders. Wouldn't be a bad idea to sit on one. He got one, but it was off the plate. Sit on one, make him elevate a little bit, drive something in the outfield at a, at a minimum. Right. Pedro's in a good spot right now. He's got hits in six of his last nine at bats. Braves in the catbird seat with the bases loaded, nobody out. A double and two infield hits. Infield creeps in for the Mets. High fly ball. Kadire. Sets up. Persinski, the runner at third. He's tagging. He's coming. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's going to be knocked away. Persinski scores. Runner to third is safe. And Darno got hurt on the collision at the plate. I think he got arm whipped trying to catch the ball and tag him on the way by. Challenging the throw up the line. The boy 
right in AJ's leg. In fact, he tripped AJ as he went by. Yeah, it's kind of the same play you see happen to first baseman sometimes when it throws up the line and they try to go get it. He's got to have contact with the runner. Right on the knee. Boy, did he get whipped around. Brzezinski actually was tripped on the play by the arm of Darno. And from one catcher to another, you know, Brzezinski hates to see Darno banged up. Ball and base runner got to the base line at the same time, and the left arm or left shoulder of Darno paid the price. A sacrifice fly by Syriaco has put Atlanta in front. Now men are at second and third with one out. And let's see if Terry Collins will allow Darno to continue. Darno's lobbying to stay in there, but I don't know. It looks like the answer will be no. So an injury filled season for Travis Darno. Pops up again here in the sixth inning on inadvertent collision on the third baseline with A.J. Pruszynski. Plessy move by A.J. to stay there though, checking on him. Didn't get a chance to say anything to him, but it's one of those things in baseball, certainly inadvertent. So Kevin Plawecki will take over behind the plate for the Mets. As soon as we find out more on Darno, we'll we'll let you know. He'll get a couple of chances to catch a few here before the top of the Braves order comes up. So Leathersitch is charged with the go-ahead run here in the sixth. And Barrett has runners second and third with one out. See, I would. <laughs> I don't know, is this small on my part? If I'm Freddie Gonzalez, I might object to the fact that he's playing catch with the pitcher. The pitcher's getting these warm up tosses to kind of yeah. maybe get squared away. Now they're all fastballs, he's not throwing any sliders. But I think I'd have wanted him to play catch with a third baseman. So Darno out of the ball game. Jace Peterson in the batter's box. He's walked, still in the base, scored, and has an RBI on a sacrifice fly. The Mets will take the bat out of his hands. How about this strategy? They'll go righty righty with Maven. That part you understand, but the inherent risk for Terry Collins is Cameron Maven's been one of the best hitters in baseball with runners in scoring position all year. Yeah, and there are a few walks on. Uh, Barrett's line too that we saw in his 11 innings of work. Yeah, with a base open though, and you need a double play really to get out of the inning. Jace has been swinging the bat so well. I think it's really, it's really about your only choice really to try and get out of this thing without it falling apart on you here. Here are your National League leaders with runners in scoring position. David and Matt Carpenter have been first and second for most of this month. And Freddie Freeman, not available tonight, is fifth on that list. How about Chris Bryant? The rookie for the Cubs, doing a fine job in that category, too. 5 4 Atlanta in the sixth. Maven this year with the bases loaded has been even better than that 400 plus average. He's six for nine with nine runs batted in. And so you're right, Tom. There really isn't much of, of a choice, no. but it's not a choice you want to have to make. Right. Either choice is not a really good one. No. You know, factor in two with Cameron's speed. Double play is going to be tough anyway, but. Oh, and by the way, Syriaco came through again. Wasn't a very deep fly ball, but it worked. 
Williams Perez at the moment in position to win the game. Base is loaded for Maven. Infield in for the Mets. One out. Almost hit him. One ball, no strikes. One of the things that served Cameron so well in these bases loaded spots is he stayed with his program. He hasn't gotten greedy to try to hit a grand slam. He's still tried to hit the ball the other way. And if this guy fastball in comes back with the sliders you expect to see him throw, it would be perfect for Cameron. Didn't mean to. He fouled it away. A ball and a strike. Yeah, he was trying to stop on a fastball and didn't. Keep in mind, as we said earlier, Juris Familia might not be available tonight for the Mets. So you might see Terry Collins use his bullpen in unconventional ways tonight and tomorrow to try to keep it close or keep a lead. His club's down a run. Braves threatening with a big inning tonight. Three straight fastballs and 92 on those. I right, got a shot for a strikeout now. Venture to think he's either going to try and climb the ladder with another fastball, maybe, or try and take a shot at that slider in the dirt. You know, it's, if you think he's looking for it, you can throw it. Just don't throw it where you can hit it. He's fouled off two of those pitches. This at bat. One and two. Or if you think he's looking slider, you just got to make sure you finish it. You can't miss over the plate. If you miss, you got to miss out of the zone. Where he's looking for it, he might be prone to swing at it, even if it's not a strike. All of them in the same place. All in, 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 in. A couple of those check swings that were foul balls weren't strikes. Like all these Mets pitchers have pitched inside more than any pitchers I've seen doing games this year, that's for sure. Two and two. Bouncing ball toward third. Campbell will step on the bag, and that's all he's going to get. Maven put it in play, and the Braves pick up a sixth run. Simmons scores. Perez forced third. Peterson and Maven aboard. And Kelly Johnson's the hitter, but first things first, Terry Collins will go to his lineup card and make a double switch. Oh, boy, I thought he had a play. It's just got. It's just got to be a force play at the plate. Yeah. Thank you very much. Wonder if Campbell forgot how many outs there were. Don't know. Another questionable Mets defensive decision cost them another run. Six four is your score. Double switch for the Mets. We'll tell you about that when we come back to the Atlanta sixth.
three hits in the inning. The play at the plate that cost the Mets Travis Darno. Well, well, look at this. We're going to show it to you in, in slow motion, but Andrelton gets a late start here. And then look where he runs inside the line there. And maybe that somehow caused Campbell to not get a good look at home plate and see where he was going to throw the ball. Maybe another heads up base running play by Andrelton Simmons, but boy, Campbell had all the time he needed to get the force play at the plate. And he'll have the rest of the night to think about that play because he's been taken out by the Mets. Ruben Tejada moves from short to third. Wilmer Flores checks in at shortstop. And Sean Gilmartin is on to face Kelly Johnson. Third pitcher of the inning for New York. And the first pitch by Kelly popped up down the left field line, but just foul. Gil Martin came on in the eighth inning last night. That's used four pitchers in that inning. And Jace Peterson had a marvelous at bat against him. He drove the ball over the head of Lagaris to straightaway center that scored Andrelton Simmons and Pedro Siriaco and proved to be the winning margin for the Braves in game one. No balls and a strike. Runners go. The pitch is strike. The throw to third is late. Peterson and Maben steal. And Tejada's hurt. They are running out of players. Hard slide by Jace Peterson, and Tejada's still on a knee. They've got his ankle trapped. Body right there. Oh boy, kind of hyperextended his knee too. And I think the Mets are going to challenge this yeah, call to third base. I was just going to say that. It looked like Peterson slid right by the bag yep. and Tahada had it on his back hip. Jace may have come off the bag, and so he would be the third out of the inning. This is a big replay challenge for New York. Doesn't have it. He's off the bag right there. So the fans see his arm go across the bag from the outfield angle from the left field line. The replay we just showed you, maybe the more definitive call. Will there be enough evidence to overturn call of safe at third? No, there's he. Remain in contact with the base from elbow to abdomen. From Jerry Lane's position when he called that, there's no way he could tell if Jace Peterson lost contact with the base. See what Jerry Lane sees right here. He sees his hand go across the base and assumes he's still on it. This is a big review. If it goes the Mets way, the inning is over. If the call is upheld or if the call stands, the Braves will have him at second and third for Kelly Johnson and two out. Even that that view from uh, our robo cam in first base. I'm not sure you can definitively say he lost contact with the base. I don't think you can see that edge of the base enough well enough to determine that he wasn't on it. This one. I first. Right there he looks like he's off to me. Yeah he does. He sure does. And the call is overturned. So Jace Peterson is tagged out of third base. Tejada stayed in, paid the price, and made a big out for the Mets. That ends the inning, and Atlanta settles for two. It's a 6 4 score. Middle game at Turner Field.
there to dress up as your favorite Star Wars character to march in a pregame parade around the field. The ticket package includes a limited edition Jason Grilly Rebel bobblehead, a ticket to the game, and it gets you onto the field for the pregame parade. Go to Braves.com slash Star Wars. Two hours and 28 minutes to play six innings in Atlanta tonight. Our flight to Washington won't be quite so long. And we'll be taking that on Monday evening. And our friends at Delta Airlines will get us from Atlanta to our nation's capitals. Uh, capitals will start a series with the Nationals Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Luis Avilan, the second Braves pitcher. He'll try to protect the lead for Williams Perez, who went six innings, allowing four runs. He is in line to pick up his fourth victory. He was in two games of the Boston series, an inning and two thirds total, one hit, no runs or walks, a couple of strikeouts. Wilmer Flores came in in the flip flop batting order for the Mets, and he'll lead things off. Dangerous hitter, he's got 10 homers. Flores was 0 for 4 in the game last night. Fly ball toward left. Perez in the corner. In foul ground. Gets there. One out. Krasinski want to talk about how to pitch Curtis Granderson who's got two hits including a homer and two runs scored. Well I would surmise that he was brought in just to pitch to Granderson. They knew the pitcher's spot was due up. Nobody knew that there was going to be a double switch when he was warming up. But he's already gotten Flores and lefty to lefty to try to neutralize Granderson. But it's been Curtis who's done the neutralizing. He's three for six against Avalon, including a homer. That was Nick Massett. Thank you, pardon. That was Kenneth warming up, not Massett. Strike two took a little off. To first. Kelly Johnson's got it. Kelly's done a nice job filling in for Freddie Freeman at first. He's looked pretty comfortable over there. And he handles that chance cleanly for the second out. He's an athlete, you know. Exactly. He has done a good job over there, and Brace continue to play well in this series. All the more reason to be patient with Freddie. Give him plenty of time to heal. Although he doesn't want to hear that. But no, no. You know, it's okay. There's a strike for Ruben Tejada. Braves are trying to do something to the Mets that hasn't happened to New York too often. They've scored four runs but are losing tonight. I showed you that. Graphic earlier, a 3 4 run uh, line, as it were. Elbow, elbow, 
One ball, one strike to Tejada. Swing and a miss. You heard Brad Hange on the press box PA system. Left elbow is being examined by the Mets medical staff for their catcher, Travis Darno. They aren't taking x rays. That's not encouraging. Hope it's not serious. One ball, two strikes. Base is empty, two outs. And a breaking ball froze to Hada. And he slams the bat down in frustration. And Avalon was the good Luis Avalon. We head to the seventh inning stretch. The Braves protect a 6 4 lead at home. Presented by the Home Depot, the Georgia Lottery, and Five Hour Energy Shots. Have you tried great tasting Five Hour Energy lately? Big crowd in Atlanta tonight. They've seen a good ball game at 6 4 Braves at the seventh inning stretch. Fans, join us on the 4th of July weekend here at Turner Field. The Phillies will be in town. What better way to celebrate Independence Day than by experiencing America's pastime and the best fireworks show in the Southeast. Go to Braves.com slash tickets. Plan your 4th of July trip to the ballpark. I like the sound of a real baseball organ in a major league ballpark. And Matthew Kaminsky, one of the best in the business, serenaded the crowd with Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And we've had a raucous crowd tonight. Fun game. Ten runs, 14 hits, nine combined men left on base. Williams Perez has outdueled Noah Syndergaard to this point. The Mets bullpen has had some issues tonight. They've given up two runs. And Sean Gilmartin is back out there for New York as the Braves bat in the seventh. Kelly Johnson was in the batter's box when Peterson was called out on a replay at third base on a stolen base attempt. Yeah, if they had uh, regained the lead and replaced their pitcher, he basically could have been in line for the win without retiring a hitter. That's not the case. There's a strike to Kelly Johnson. Kelly is 0 for 3. He's cooled a bit at the plate. One hit in his last 14 at bats. A 
Top fly foul and out of play. New York began play today one half game ahead of Washington. The Nationals beat the Pirates six nothing. Max Scherzer with a no hitter in near perfect game today. And that's for a half game out on June the 10th. They've held first place in the division virtually the entire season. Tonight, their rookie Noah Syndergaard threw too many pitches in four innings. And Kelly Johnson's retired by Gil Martin. There's the first out. Marquez is the batter. He's one for three. A third inning single for Nick. His 11th hit this year against the Mets. Slashed toward left. Kadire near the line. Gets there. Two outs. Juan Uribe looks for his first hit tonight. He has struck out twice in three trips. You know, AJ Przinski, a left handed batter, is on deck, but he's three for three. And going for the cycle. There you go. Four straight out of the strike zone, and Uribe will make his way to first. Here comes AJ. Three hits, three runs. Needs a long ball for the cycle tonight. That'll drive you nuts. Two quick outs and four pitch walk. Like AJ was talking to Plowicki there about Darno, seeing if he knew if he was okay or not. The left elbow being checked out. That's all we know at the moment. Here's Przinski, a fly ball center. Get out of here, ball. Go. Yankee Stadium, he might have had a shot. This is a big boy ballpark, and AJ flies out and is retired for the first time. We go to the eighth.
11. A little dribbler. That's going to be trouble. Smoltz barehand play. Oh, my goodness. How in the world did he get Tom Glavin there? That looked like a sure hit. How old is he again? Wow. Greatest play in the history of the game. Boy, oh, boy. How many times do I have to watch that? Well, how about this? Check it out. Wow. We're in the John Stockton oh. golf shorts. <laughs> Why were you looking way left? <laughs> Probably that's where it was going. <laughs> sure. Back in those days. And we show those great old timey videos because the premiere of John Smoltz Hall of Fame career. Another terrific episode of Driven July 10th Friday at 630 Eastern time. And of course a special year for John Smoltz. He's headed to Cooperstown. You'll be there I assume to see your old partner. Wouldn't miss it. Absolutely. We'll be watching from afar as Jim Johnson goes to work for the Braves in the eighth inning. Tough part of the order for the Mets. Duda Kadire, and then we'll see. Well, he's had a string of good outings. Five straight, all one inning efforts, and only two hits allowed total. No runs or walk. Make it one walk. Duda's walked. He's been hit by a pitch. He's one for 12 on the Mets road trip. It's the fourth game on the trip for the Mets. They've scored six runs. And a shot over the shift into right field. A base hit. Lead off single for Duda. That'll bring the tying run to the plate, Michael Kadire. Well, Lucas was due tonight. <laughs> so the Mets fans who were quiet earlier begin to hoot and holler late. 6 4 Atlanta, nobody out in the eighth. And a strike. The Braves can win this one tonight. They'll pull to within a game of 500. They'll also knock the Mets out of first place. That could work out just fine for Atlanta. You've got New York tomorrow. If the Nationals pull further ahead. Well, that's who the Braves play next on the road. And you rebate. Great stop. There's one. There's two. That's why the Braves got your rebate. What a play. How quick was he getting to his feet? Big league play right there, folks. And Jake. Jace Peterson's footwork, Tommy. I was just going to say, he continues to get better and better. He's been working at it, spending a lot of time out there working on his footwork. He's paying off. He's turning that thing quick now. Six pitches, two outs for Johnson, and now Kevin Ploiecki. And a strike. High hopper. Uribe will fire to first, and it's off Kelly Johnson's glove. And no further advance by Plawecki. So, as the current Met catcher made his way to first base, the man he replaced in the lineup, Travis Darno, got some good news, I guess. The x rays on his elbow were negative, but he was diagnosed with a hyper extended left elbow. Field hit for Plawecki, and here's Lagaris. I think AJ Brzezinski's going to sleep well tonight. Hustling around, backing up that play. He's been on the bases all night long. A 
a strike. Great crowd tonight. 40,733. Four mile an hour pitch. Balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Another impressive inning for Jim Johnson. He allows a couple of hits, but Uribe started a marvelous double play to get him out of trouble. Home eight, six four Atlanta. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. Jim Johnson loved the work of Juan Uribe to start a double play to help him get out of any eighth inning difficulty. Now the Braves look to pad a 6-4 lead. If we go back to our AT&T U-verse trivia question, Williams Perez started the year with a 2.14 ERA. Which Braves rookie has the lowest ERA in a season with a minimum of 20 starts? Steve Avery. Good call. Lou Burdett. And I'll say Warren Spahn. Oh, that's my next one. When was that exactly? I don't know. I've never heard of Bill Souders. Did you? Nope. This is Hansel Robles. You may not have heard of him, but we have seen him before. He's the latest out of the Mets bullpen. Goes hard. Upper 90s fastball and a slider. 
They'll try to spoil Simmons perfect night at the plate. Brave shortstop is three for three. Two runs at RBI. Started the series in an 0 for 12 slide and he's 5 for 6 already in the series. Doesn't even say Mets on their jersey tonight. But it doesn't matter. He knows who's in there. That blue and orange is a dead giveaway, isn't it? <laughs> Braves and Mets on Heritage Weekend honoring the whole Negro Leagues. Mets uniforms mimic those of the New York Royal Giants, the Brooklyn Royal Giants, as a shot to right turns into a four hit game for Simmons. It's his second four hit game against the Mets in a week. Third career four hit game for him. Yuri Perez. He's got a two hit night. Both hits infield hits including a beautiful bunt. This one shot toward right. Granderson's coming on. He's going to get there and won't have a play at first. One on one out. And here comes Johnny Gomes. Might see him in the lineup tomorrow against Matt Harvey. He's nursing a sore quad. Hurt his leg a little bit trying to score from second on a base hit a couple of nights ago. He fits perfectly into that old uni. Yes, he does. Strike call. Marlins beat the Reds 5 nothing. Cardinals 10 1 over the Phillies. Oh, cow. Rockies 5 1 over Milwaukee. Washington 6 nothing over the Pirates. Those are the finals. Giants 6 2 over the Dodgers. Bottom of the ninth inning in Los Angeles. Arizona and San Diego no score in the first. Skipped up there, two balls and a strike for Gomes. Down the left field line. Did he keep it fair? No. Just double by an inch. It's two and two. Interesting story out of the American League earlier today. You know about the Seattle Mariners, a club that was picked by many to win the West this year. Star play tonight, eight and a half games out of first. They've made a hitting coach change. Former Met Howard Johnson has been reassigned in the Seattle organization, and Edgar Martinez has become the new Seattle hitting coach. Best hitters I ever saw over the American League. Edgar Martinez. 2 2 count. And a bouncer toward Flores. He's got it. The shovel to second for one. And on to first in time. It's a double play. So Robles, a nice job to get out of the eighth inning. He allows the leadoff hit to Edelton Simmons, part of his four for four night. But now the game rests in the hands and golden arm of Jason Grilly. He'll stride in with the bottom of the Mets order coming up. Three outs to get for the Atlanta 6 4 win.
Subs the moment at any moment within game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. 6 4 Braves. We go to the ninth inning, and in a bit of role reversal, the last time Jason Grilly saw the Mets, he picked up the win, and Williams Perez earned the save. Now, Grilly will try to save. A victory for Williams Perez. Well, the Braves bullpen over the last 14 ball games, their ERA while seventh, seventh, and sixth, that's a vast improvement over where it was. So things are looking up. Picked up four wins in the process, too. And for Jason Grilly, for the last week to eight days, he's worked every other game. Tonight he's working back to back. See if he's still sharp because he's been outstanding. Last 11 outings, he's only given up one earned run. Tries for save number 20 tonight. He's got Herrera, then Siciliani for the pitcher, and then Wilmer Flores. Bottom part of the lineup card for New York. And he's off to a good start. Strike one. Yeah, I think that I think the other thing that may potentially help this bullpen continue going in that direction is for the first time in a while, it seems they got a little continuity out there. That that shuttle bus between here and Gwinnett been a little bit slower here of late, which is good. Wilson Herrera hitting 219. And he's down to his last strike. Herrera 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Also failed to cover second on a stolen base attempt. Cost the Mets a run earlier in the game. Back that play. Scored the second run of the night and tied it 2 2 off his starter, Noah Syndergaard. No balls, two strikes. Popped up. Uribe in foul ground will give way to Brzezinski at the Mets on deck circle. He had to deal with the bats, the pine tar, the batting ring. And he gingerly made his way to the circle and made the catch for the first out. A lot of traffic over there, but no trouble for Krasinski. That is a tough play. And he made it without any trouble. Navigating the corner of the stands, too. He's had a great night. This is Daryl Siciliani hitting 267. On my count, he's the last available Mets position player for yeah. Terry Collins. What I've got too. He's four for ten against the Braves. His first big league homer against Atlanta, June 14th. Struck out against him, against Grilly last night in the ball game. Tell you what, those Mets fans in left field, they're hanging in there. Yep. Out of the good natured rivalry between the Braves and Mets. Showing him some southern hospitality and hopefully an Atlanta win. Two balls, no strikes. Two and one. It's now two and two. That's Wilmer Flores, the shortstop. Don't want him coming up with a chance to tie the game. Get after this guy. He got him. That ball darted down and away from the left hand hitter. Grilly's first strikeout, and the Braves are an out away. That's a pitcher's pitch right there. 92 93, down and away with a little bit of sink. Now the big crowd on its feet, and the Braves fans drowning out the Mets gathering. 40,000 plus. Base is empty for Wilmer Flores.
Strike one. We've got the boys to men concert after the game. Some of these Braves boys are becoming men before our very eyes. Williams Perez and out away from a 4 0 record. NC Bank one more time shows us that yeah it did clip that low outside corner. One ball one strike for Flores. Is a strike away. One and two. Oh boy. Just a little something to remember me by. You yeah. going to the clubhouse tonight. That won't hurt as bad though with the night he's had offensively. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Line drive right field by Wilmer Flores and the Mets will bring the potential tying run to the plate. And Granderson's already homered in the game. Left that one up. We've already seen some pitches tonight made to the Braves that were left upstairs that Turned into base hits. Yeah, I got a little underneath that one or to the side of it. And had that side movement, not that sink. For Granderson. Yanked foul. Outfield deep. Not so much to prevent a double as just to keep that runner from scoring at first base. And keep Granderson at first if he does get a hit. One one pitch. He went around. Jason pulled a string. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, good try. Here's the two two. Granderson pops it up. Perez drifts back. He's got room. He's got it. The Braves have beaten the Mets again. Williams Perez is 4 and 0. First Braves rookie starter to start that way since Tommy Hansen went 5 and 0 six years ago. Anderson Simmons a four hit night. A.J. Przinski a homer shy of the cycle. He scored three runs. And the Braves win by two. Six for your final. They go for the sweep in Atlanta tomorrow afternoon. Back with more after this.